Hey there, it's Jonna Pan here with another video. Uh, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Um, and if you're one of my regular watchers or subscribers, welcome back. Um, either way, make sure that you push the subscribe button, push the little bell, wherever it is, get the notifications, find out what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it a whole lot. So today I'm gonna talk about <clears throat> something a little bit more specific. Usually, if you're not familiar with my content, Usually I just film videos about my life and my experiences living in Japan. Um, but today I'm going to talk about a specific topic, which is coming to Japan and teaching English. So this video is meant for people who are not yet in Japan or thinking about coming to Japan and you want to know what your options are. Um, I so. I, as you can see from other videos, I work for the JET program, uh, I work on the JET program, um, so I can talk more specifically about that experience, but I'm going to be talking about a few different options and helping you kind of get an idea of, of what's out there. So teaching English in Japan doesn't mean one thing. You can be employed as an ALT, which is what I am, so it's an assistant language teacher, which means that you are in a Japanese classroom with another teacher, and you are kind of an assistant teacher. And that's at an elementary, junior high, senior high school, private or public, but you're in the school system. Versus there's also uh, English English instructors at private schools, at um, private language schools, which are called Eikaiwa. So I'll call those Eikaiwa from now on. So after watching this video, hopefully you should have an idea which kind of job you're more interested in. Um, but please check out both options and, and all the options before you sign a contract. Um, if this isn't the most relevant video for you, feel free to keep watching along if you'd like. So yeah, enjoy. Um, yeah, so we've got, like I said, the two worlds. You've got the ALT, Assistant Language Teacher world, or you've got the Eikaiwa world. So in the ALT world, it's further broken down into a few different options. So you can either be uh, employed through the JET program, you can work for a dispatch company, or you can be a direct hire with the Board of Education, or a BOE. Um, if you're watching this video, you're probably not going to apply for a BOE job because they're a little tricky and I don't know how easy they are to do from abroad. Um, which means that you're left with dispatch companies and JET, which is my program. Um, in the Eikaiwa world, there are a ton of options. It can vary depending on whether you want to do full-time or part-time, salaried or contract, like by the hour, or by the lesson, one-on-one uh, -on -one English conversation classes, or small classroom settings. Um, so there's different companies out there that suit all those different preferences. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll talk about three options. Jet, dispatch companies, a Kaiwa work. Uh, so let's get into the comparisons. Part one, the hard facts. ALTs typically work a similar number of hours, whether you're a JET or a dispatch company ALT. So you tend to work 30 to 40 hours. JETs are contracted to work 35 hours per week, which is technically part-time in Japan. Um, but wh whether you're a JET or a dispatch ALT, you're going to be working Monday to Friday during school hours. Um, Sometimes you'll do occasional weekend work. Last month I just had uh, a sports day on a Saturday, but you will always be compensated with a following weekday off. So the next Monday we had the day off, so we still had a two consecutive day uh, weekend. Um, and dispatch companies will do the same thing. A Kaiwa work, on the other hand, is afternoons, evenings, and weekend work. So it's when people are not in school and when people are not at work because A Kaiwa work is not just young people, young students. Students can be of all ages. I know um, for more advanced people, people who have advanced credentials, you can teach business English. So that's meant for adults. Um, and that can tend to be actually be higher paying work. But speaking of work, um, jets make the most money. They just do, at least to start. Uh, so jets start at 3.36 million yen per year, which is about US 33,600. Um, whereas dispatch ALTs start at 2.2 to 2.7 million, depending on how much previous experience you have um, and depending on a couple other small things and depending on the company as well. Um, you get pay bumps each year, but it's going to be the same amount for JETs and for dispatch ALTs. And the reason the salary is lower for dispatch ALTs is because you're hired through a middleman. Um, versus whereas JETs, once you're hired, you work for that Board of Education directly. 
Um, but when you're a dispatch ALT, you work for a company located at a board of education or located at a BOE. So they, as a middleman, they take a cut of that salary. Um, and it sucks, but that's, that's, that's just how it is. That's business, right? So a Kiowa jobs, on the other hand, are going to be all over the board in terms of pay because it's going to, of course, depend on all the variables that I just talked about. So. Uh, how many classes you teach a week, whether you're salaried or contract, how many hours you work, etc. Um, <clears throat> locations, jets work from anywhere from 1 to 20 plus schools. It's really rare to have that many schools. I'd say the typical amount is 1 to 5, but I, at my orientation I met a girl who I think had something like 18 schools. And I know, I know a couple jets who have like 12 plus schools, but those are the outliers. Um, I have two schools. One is my base and then one I go to maybe once or twice a month to do little mini special things. Um, yeah, that's a much more typical experience, I would say. Dispatch ALTs tend to work one to five schools, roughly. Um, I think there's even fewer exceptions where people have the high number of schools because they have uh, because the company has a higher amount of control over sending people to maybe different BOEs um, to fill in gaps more equitably. Uh, Akaiwas, you're going to work at one school. You're going to work at your private language school. Just like if you were working at <clears throat> doing retail, if you were working at H&M, you wouldn't work at every H&M in the city, you'd work at one H&M. So just like that, you're going to work at one Akaiwa. Uh, let's see, location. So when you apply to the JET program, you can state your location preferences, but from my understanding and from my own experience, those are almost never uh, honored. <laughs> so I applied uh, and I requested Q uh, Hokkaido and I got placed in Kyushu. So that seems to be pretty par for the course. Um, and I, I think they ask it for very, very specific circumstances. So I think for people who have certain medical conditions or certain accessibility needs, I think that's why they ask for location preferences um, because they generally really are not honored. <laughs> uh, and that's one of the things that definitely it's, it's a drawback about the JET program and a lot of people don't choose it for that reason. And so they might choose, for example, a dispatch company, uh, especially regional dispatch companies. So certain dispatch companies are a bit smaller and they're a bit more centrally located around one area. So if you really want to work in Tokyo or around Tokyo, you might apply for a dispatch company that is located entirely within the Kanto region. Um, versus JET, which is a national one. And I believe even some of the bigger dispatch companies like Altia or Interact, I believe even if they are nationwide or over a huge, huge area, I believe they'll at least honor kind of a regional request. Um, Akaiwas, because it is one school, so there are big companies like Eon and Nova, and they, they have tons of schools, tons of locations all over. I, believe they do job postings kind of like a, we have an opening at these places and I think you can apply to either those specific places or you can apply and they'll tell you okay we'll hire you for any of these locations um, so I believe there's a bit of flexibility there uh, and I believe you can also maybe I think I've heard of people who have deferred a hiring um, they've deferred a hiring placement because they were waiting for another location to open up I believe vacation time Jets get 20 paid vacation days, plus national holidays. That's again in the stated contract. It might look a little bit different. I already know, uh, I have one friend who she is a Jet, but she works for a private school. And what they've actually done with her contract is they said that she gets 10 days vacation, plus national holidays, plus school closures. So whereas I have to come into school, even if the students aren't there, she gets paid leave. So I believe it ends up working out. She has a really long summer break and a really long winter break. So I think she even has more, technically gets more paid days off than I do, but she has less flexibility over the days that she can use. Um, so, I mean, it's all kind of, it all kind of checks and balances out, right? But uh, dispatch companies, they tend to offer about five to 10 days plus holidays plus school closures. So just like my friend at the private school, dispatch companies, you don't have to work if the students aren't there. However, you might not get paid for that time. Uh, and that's one of the things that, that is a drawback about dispatch companies. Um, but desk warming is a real thing in the JET program and people will tell you all their opinions about it. Uh, if you work at an Akaiwa, your vacation time tends to reflect that of like a standard 
salaried worker in Japan, which is about four weeks vacation plus national holidays. But depending on the company, that can come with um, conditions or restrictions. So I know I was looking up one company who they said that three of those weeks of those four weeks have to be taken as a one week chunk. Um, and then the last five days you can kind of play around with as personal leave days. Uh, so always be aware of what your compensation and what your um, vacation packages look like. Second job. If you're a jet, you can't get a second job. You're a government employee and I believe it's a conflict of interest if you receive income from other sources, so I believe it's kind of a government of Japan stance, you can't get a second job. Some BOEs, like mine, might be more lenient, so I can take on occasional one-off, um, one-off like paid kind of volunteer or paid work things. Uh, I have to make sure that it's a certain kind of paid volunteer work. Um, if it is a if it is a recurring job, there's a lot more people work, it's a nightmare, but I can't take on a second job. Um, that's a big no. <clears throat> and for most jets, any kind of, imp uh, any kind of um, secondary income is a big no. Um, and that's just the way it goes. Uh, uh, but of course, if you work for a dispatch company, if you work for an Eikaiwa, those are private companies, those are private organizations. They can't tell you what you can and can't do in your free time necessarily, or at least around getting a second job. So feel free to get a second job. Actually, if you're working at an Eikaiwa, you might want to get a second job if you're working part-time or if you're just coming to Japan. And then there's a few things I'll mention about the JET program, because I am a JET, uh, that are JET specific. So JET will cover your flight coming to Japan from your home country and your flight back if you meet certain conditions. Um, and that's the, only, that's the only organization that does that. No one else covers your flights, and that's one of the big pros of the JET program. Um, but other companies I've seen, they'll do, offer to do like an airport pickup or like help you give you directions to get to your accommodation. So most companies won't leave you stranded if you're fresh off the plane into Japan. Um, but JET does a really, really good job of making sure that you are taken care of from the moment you get to the airport in your home country to the moment that you arrive to your new home in Japan. Um, JET will also, speaking of your new home, JET will provide you with either subsidized BOE owned housing or they'll help you find a place. So uh, my my BOE, they um, they helped me find this place, which was really great. They helped co-sign on my, on my rent, on my lease. Um, but I know other of my friends, they've moved into housing owned by their BOE and they tend to pay a heavily subsidized rate, which is amazing. Um, Dispatch companies will help you find a place. I don't know how many dis I don't know if any dispatch companies have dispatch company owned housing. I don't know if they have any employee housing. But Eikaiwa companies sometimes do. So again, look at the company, look to see what they offer. Eikaiwas and even Jet can often put you in a Leo Palace, and dispatch companies might encourage you to go for a Leo Palace. But I'd suggest Googling Leo Palace before you commit to one. Um, they basically are studio apartments, um, single occupancy units. They're small, they're not everyone's cup of tea, they're not my cup of tea if you couldn't pick up on that. Um, but they work, they're usually pretty cheap, um, and they have internet included, they have... Yeah, like, they, they are what they are. Um, don't expect the world of them, be cautious, check them out. But I have some friends who are in Leo Palaces and they're perfectly happy with them. Part. Two, what are your goals? So questions to ask yourself before coming to Japan, before applying it to a job even, is ask yourself, why am I coming to Japan? How long do I want to stay here? And what kind of career do I want? Because those three questions really will determine which option is good for you. So just to kind of hop around the board a bit, JET provides the greatest security, but the least flexibility. That's kind of the general rule with JET. So it provides you with a comfortable salary because you can't get a second salary. Um, it provides you with uh, stable housing, but you generally can't pick that housing, um, or you don't have much choice in that housing. And it's, it's a year contract, so you can break contract, but please don't. But you're kind of locked into a role for a year or two plus years. Um, and if teaching isn't what you want to do, and if you know that already, JET might not be a great 
long-term fit for you. I wouldn't even recommend necessarily using it as a foot in the door. Um, a dispatch company or an Eikaiwa might be an excellent foot in the door if you just want to get into Japan and get a job and then once you're here, find other work. Or if you have a passion, so if you are an artist or a freelance worker of some kind, an Eikaiwa might be the perfect kind of job for you because you can pick up that part-time work. Um, while you're working on your main passion. However, I will say that JET can be a great stepping stone for what it does. So with JET, there's a strong focus on international, intercultural exchange. And so if you're on JET um, as an ALT, then it might be a good idea uh, to see what kind of networking opportunities you can do in your placement. Um, I have some friends who, even as ALTs, uh, are managing to make some, some connections outside of the teaching world. JET sends you on your merry way after three to five years. So it's a very limited, time limited thing. Versus if you work at an, um, an Eikaiwa or a dispatch company, it's a bit more, you kind of go until you don't want to go anymore. Um, dispatch ALTs tend to either move up the company, so you can move up in a couple of different ways, um, whether it's into recruiting or training or administrative work. Um, and same with Eikaiwas you have that, kind of, that same kind of progression up versus Jets, you're an ALT until the end. Um, so there's a bit, like I said, there's more structure to the Jet program, but less flexibility. So if you, depending on which one you value more, that's where you're gonna wanna go. Um, there's also a bit of a, a kind of a cognitive shift depending on which role you're in. So Jets, when you're hired as a Jet, it's marketed as a, you're a cultural ambassador. That's kind of how, why you're brought to Japan. And you accomplish that through teaching English versus when you're hired at a dispatch company they tend to market it as come to Japan to teach English and in doing so you will do intercultural exchange so the emphasis is the emphasis is kind of a little bit differently placed in each of the two but they still have the same core values I'd say uh, however depending on which one you're more interested in the English teaching or the intercultural exchange that might be the program that you want to apply to um, if you have a problematic fetish for Asian people, or if you want to be like the special gene in town, uh, then any of these jobs will help you achieve your goals. But please don't apply to them, and please don't come to Japan. Part three, application process. So all jobs will ask you to be in good physical and mental health, which can seem like a big human rights violation in your home country, depending on where you're from, um, but that's just standard employment practice in Japan. Um, all jobs require you to be a native or near native English speaker, and they want you to have some kind of advanced degree, usually a bachelor's degree. I'm not sure about two-year college certificates or diplomas or things like that. I think bachelor degrees are kind of the gold standard. Um, JET has a notoriously long and complicated application process. It's been made easier in recent years because in certain countries you can now submit it online, but if you're not already familiar with the JET application process, it's a slog and it takes almost a year. Um, so I'm actually going to be making my next video in this series about the application process for JET, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but dispatch companies, on the other hand, tend to have a much more streamlined and much faster process. Jets, you only apply once a year, and it's a year-long process. Dispatch companies, they do two intakes, in the spring and in the fall, and I believe it's only a three to four month process from application to arriving in Japan, so it's much faster. Uh, and they might ask you to do things like um, prepare a teaching demo or prepare teaching materials, versus in Jet, it's much more, uh, they wanna know your personal background, they want letters of reference, and they wanna do, they wanna do an interview with you, so they wanna see more of you in person. Um, Eikaiwa companies, those are kind of the same way that you'd apply for a regular job. Um, you apply, they interview you, there you go. Um, some companies might have a rolling application process for Eikaiwa, so always be sure to check out and um, positions will become available when they're available. So it's not like they have big intake periods. They, they're just, they're constantly open. Part four, support and opportunities. This is where a lot of people will really praise the JET program. And I definitely think that JET does some things well, but I don't know if it's leaps and bounds above and beyond what a dispatch company can provide. So all ALTs, when you come to Japan, you will get a short training process at the beginning, at the beginning, 
It's more like an orientation, uh, and with jets, you're in a very fancy hotel in the middle of Tokyo, which is very exciting. Um, but they tend to emphasize more in Japan on the job learning. So you might find after your orientation that you really don't understand what you're going to do from day to day and from hour to hour. And that's because that's how training happens in Japan. You just, you learn as you go. Um, so don't expect to get everything perfect within the first month that you're here because you won't. Um, JET has JET has a pretty good uh, support network, so two support networks actually. So while you're a JET, there is the A-JET community, so the association for JET. And when you finish, there is um, there, there are active JET alumni chapters all over the world. Some are much more active than others, um, but I know at least the one in Toronto, which is my kind of my base, um, they have a very active network. So I met a lot of I met a lot of JET alumni before I came to came to Japan, um, which was really cool and it's a really nice opportunity to, because, to my knowledge, I don't think any other companies, Akaiwa or um, Dispatch, offer that. So I really appreciate that. However. Um, the other companies, uh, the dispatch companies, do offer a similar orientation period. Um, dispatch and Jet offer kind of some kind of ongoing training throughout the year. Uh, Jet has a couple conferences that you'll attend. Interact, I believe, has an optional um, career development track thing you can do, and it all depends on the company. But um, they're 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 varying degrees of successful depending on where you're placed and how big your community is um, and how well they're run. So there is always opportunity for growth within your role. Um, Akaiwas, on the other hand, tend to provide more training at the beginning because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, when you're an Akaiwa teacher, you are a language instructor or you're a language partner. So it's just you and the students versus when you're an ALT, you're the second in the room. Um, so they, if you're the only person in the room, they really wanna make sure that you know your stuff. Um, so they tend to provide a bit more training at the beginning um, and I think a bit more ongoing feedback just from what I kind of seen online. Part 5. Thinking critically about success and horror stories. So if you're watching this video and you're still watching it now, you probably are the kind of person who does your research on things. So you've probably seen some, some success stories and some horror stories online and I just... Uh, those... I find that those stories tend to reflect the person more than the actual placement or the job. So I encourage you, if you're reading those stories, I enjoy, I love reading them, they're great, um, but I encourage you to look at them critically, look and try to see what was the person's experience, what was their like expectation versus the reality, and were there actually any workers' rights violations or awful situations, or was it just a mismatch of community communication or expectations? Um, because that's what I find happens a lot. Uh, not that some experiences, not that experiences are not valid. Everyone's experience is valid and everyone's understanding their experience is valid. However, you don't need to be scared away necessarily. <clears throat> um, the general rule to understanding these stories and companies when people mention names is the bigger the name and the better the name recognition, the less likely they are to exploit you in cruel and unusual ways. So they're not going to give you subpar housing and force you to stay in it as likely or they're not going to not compensate you for work expenses for example um, <clears throat> however on the other hand they're probably a little bit more likely to exploit you in socially accepted ways like asking you to work unpaid overtime or asking you to uh, work reduced hours if there's less work available or threatening you with replacement whether it's directly or indirectly um, so that's something to be aware of. I really am speaking more about the dispatch companies and Akaiwas um, because when you work for Jet as a public employee you do have the greatest amount of security but of course you're, you'll see there's lots of Jet horror stories out there. I'm a Jet success story, I love my Jet placement, I love... There's, it's not perfect obviously but I'm, I'm really happy with where I am. Um, but again you can say that that's just because I'm a positive person, I don't know. Um, but you have the greatest, uh, I would say the greatest restrictions on what you can do and the greatest scrutiny on you. So when you're an ALT, whether you're dispatch or jet, you can tend to be seen by your community as a part of your school or your schools. Like you are a representative of your schools. 
uh, versus when you're an Eikaiwa member, you're kind of treated a bit more as a regular worker. Uh, and so what I mean by that is, there is a strong emphasis in Japanese work culture that, especially if you're working with children and if you're in the government, you are meant to be a model citizen. So you're meant to be doing nothing too sketchy, follow the rules, follow the flow of society, don't make too many waves. Um, and I think that can kind of be a shock, a culture shock to people if you're not used to it. Uh, and that could have, that could also be a reason why Eikaiwa work might appeal to someone because if you if you really do feel a strong um, need to have control over your private life, uh, being a jet can sometimes be a little restrictive on what you can and can't do. Um, so just be aware of that. That said, that doesn't tend to be the limiting factor that I've, that I've heard from a lot of people. Um, because especially if you're working at a jet or an a, uh, at a dispatch company, your co-workers are still going to assume that you're just an English teacher. They aren't necessarily going to know the circumstances under which you were hired or, your, or who your employer exactly is, because they'll probably have worked with jets, with dispatch ALTs, with direct hires, so in their eyes we're all kind of the same. Um, that's why it's important when you do come to Japan, uh, or if you, at the new start of a new school year, if you work with new people, to be very upfront and forthcoming with what your abilities are, um, with what your Japanese knowledge is, because your language abilities are very important, um, and what your experience is, uh, because people aren't going to necessarily know where you were hired from. Um, and there might not, even, might not even be many people at the school who even know what your company or your program is. Um, so you'll find that you might have to do a lot of advocating for yourself. Uh, versus if you work at an Eikaiwa, everyone in, who you work with is in the same boat as you because you're not the only person at your workplace like you. And that's all. I hope this video was informative for you. I tried, I tried to not be too pushy about one program over the other. Um, obviously, I'm a JET, I'm going to talk about the JET program, I enjoy my experience, but I do see value in all of the programs um, and all of the opportunities that are out there. So I really do encourage you, do your research, learn about the other options out there. Um, if you are interested in applying to JET, good luck, congratulations. Uh, stay tuned for my next video because it'll be about the application process and I plan on doing a monthly video series walking you from this decision-making step all the way up to arrival next year. Um, this year is a bit of a, a funny situation with COVID and all that happening. So we're actually still waiting for 2020 incoming jets. Um, but I've been I've been crawling through all the jet program pages for different countries, and it sounds like a few are actually open. So if you're in Australia, New Zealand, or South Africa, the applications have already opened. Um, other countries, I believe, they'll open pretty shortly. So stay tuned. Um, keep checking the jet program page in your in your country. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a comment below. Um, I'm happy to answer them or chat with you more. I'm also on Instagram, so you can feel free to follow me there. The link is in my um, in my channel page, uh, or you can just uh, find me at Jonapanstagram. I love my puns. Uh, anyway, that's all. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did, and I'll catch you next time. Peace, love, happiness. Bye.